fun, had quite a campaign of guitar lessons and guitar models. This actually has some pretty good binding. It's got a pickup. The rosette is nicely done. So it looks pretty nice. I believe it's a solid top. So far it's well built, doesn't have any, doesn't look like it's, uh, well it is missing a pin, but it's not separating on the bridge. The neck is in one piece, I don't see any cracks. The neck binding looks pretty good. Because of the, the dryness of our, uh, of our location in the desert, the frets are a little bit pokey. We can uh, knock those down a little bit and smooth those out. And just put some new strings, dust it off, and do a setup. And here's how. So I had a spare pin. Now we'll do a quick inspection with the mirror. Have a look at the bracing and stuff. And let's use this mechanics mirror. And see if there's any loose bracing or what we can determine. I don't see any gaps so far. One of the last things I do before taking the strings off and getting started on the setup is sight down the neck to see if there's any waviness or deformation. And this one turned out to look pretty good. So we're ready to get going on this setup. Next up, I will take the strings off and just clean the neck. Now what I also like to do, because I'm going to be picking this thing up and moving it around, I, I've learned that these fall out sometimes, and then you got to go crawling around the floor looking for them. So let's let's grab them. I grab a piece of tape and throw them all together. Make six pins. And that, Way to lose them and I put them in my little kit. And next, I take a, a Scotch Brite and I clean up the fret board with it. I just get between the, the frets and clean out any grime or gunk. Then we get a soft cloth to to dust off the headstock and then we'll check you know you check all the nuts and tighten those up this one's a little loose so I'll rinse that down so that one and that one so we'll tighten those up and we'll check the screws I have some of this Dunlap cleaner it does a good job you can do this on the entire guitar and this adds a little moisture back in too. So we just give this thing a quick shine. And just a soft clean cloth to shine it up. I'm gonna go ahead and hit some of these sharp corners with a file just to take the burr out and just brush it. As I get down to this neighborhood, it's a good idea to put down some protection. Even even just a piece of paper, a good I use this cardstock and keep that on there. So you don't scrape the top for a slight bend and then it'll go go in the little groove you see the channel put it in here face the groove towards the front push it in and pull it up 
is coming out of the hole. On the high strings, I go over and under, under the, the string that's coming out, and then over one more time and under. And that way there's no, no slippage. It kind of ties that string in there. And then you let the wraps go towards the bottom. Because you want the string to be coming down at a good angle. As this pulls out, make sure you, this pin stays down. Because it could come loose if it's not in all the way. So. It's still settling in. It pulled itself up and, got, and then locked itself in. So not too high. And I have a pitch pipe. Pitch pipe to get me in the neighborhood. Here it is. Close enough for now. And the slot goes towards the front. Put this in, put the slot so that the string goes up in that groove and you pull this up and it'll pull itself up eventually so you go over this one is sticking out on the first one or at least that's what i do and then under the rest doesn't take that many winds on the E string, and that'll pull itself tight. Pitch pipe E. Yeah, and that'll settle in. You, you might hear it go click. But it's, it's on there. It is not going to pop out. So let's get it closer in tune. See how it sounds. I use a tuning fork now. This is an E. I give it a smack. And you press the little ball in the bridge. And you hear the E. Pretty close. We'll just do relative tuning. Intonation on the E is a little out, but I think that'll be corrected when we lower the action slightly. So next up, we'll check the <laughs> we'll check the relief on the neck. I clamp it in the clean playing position. And don't squeeze too tight; just enough to hold it. And step one of course, was put new strings and tune it to pitch. And we're there. We have a tuner handy to, to get us back in tune. Pitch, pitch. Okay, there we go. And then step two. Put a capo on the first fret. We got to check the relief. That's the first part. So we put that just behind the fret. Put O one O. And you, then you press down 
the very last fret and now you have the straight line from first fret to last fret and you check the relief somewhere around 7th to 8th fret, 7th to ninth, And this relief is really high. So in order to lower the gap in here, on the high E, you don't have to go so much, but there's still a gap. So we're going to tighten the truss rod. Right there, it's a little... Allen nut. So we'll get a wrench that fits it and tighten it on. You don't turn it much, just enough to give it a nudge. And it's not instant. Like you tighten it and then like grab a drink and come on back. For me, it's a cup of coffee. Okay, before you tighten the truss rod, because that's going to put more tension on the neck, loosen the strings. You don't have to take them all the way off, but loosen them a few turns. Okay, now we can get the wrench in there and give it, I'm going to give it about a half turn to start with because it was actually kind of loose. So you turn it to the right to tighten. Okay, and not too tight. So the tension on the rod will pull this back towards me, which will flatten it out here and reduce that gap. But I'm gonna give the wood a chance to kind of settle into that new tension while I grab a cup of coffee. Okay, we tune it back up. I just use this old Korg tuner and it has an A tone. There's the B flat for horns, but an A440. There we go. The reason I do it in playing position, that way gravity doesn't mess with the tension of the strings. This is the way you're going to be holding it, so you might as well do your setup in a in a playing position. So let's, Get a rest, tuned up. Okay, back to pitch. Capo on the first fret. Press on the last fret. And the gap's closed a little, but it's still more, more of a gap than the the spec calls for. So we're going to loosen the strings and tighten it again. Now this time I just gave it like a quarter turn. Just a, a little bit of a turn to tighten it up. We get my my A tone back. And then use relative tuning for the rest. And now we check capo on the first fret. Hold down last fret. Oh, much better. It could still, it could still stand a, a bit more. We want it to be to the factory spec of Martin because basically these dreadnoughts, these import dreadnought guitars are copies of Martin because Martin built them really well and they just like, copy them. Why not? About a quarter turn.
And that's all I want to do. Get that A tone. different chords and capo first fret hold down last fret and measure not much of a gap now I'm gonna leave it at that there's room to slide the the gauge through, but it's not snug and it's not a lot of a lot of play. So I'm gonna leave it like that. So the next step is string height at the twelfth fret. So the base three thirty seconds. Now, I like to go in millimeters. So three thirty seconds is about two point three millimeters. I have this little ruler that has the like, conversions on the back. So it's easier for me to see the millimeters. And this one is showing me, this is about four. That's way high, so we can come down quite a bit. And the way to do that is to take off some material on the bottom of the bridge to bring this down around a millimeter and a half. And the high E should be a, a sixteenth of an inch. And the sixteenth is like one and a half millimeters. That's about four millimeters there too. So the action is high. And we could fix that by just shaving off a little bit on off the bottom of the saddle. So we, we have to loosen the strings quite a bit. To, to for enough room to get those get that saddle out of there okay once I can get the front end out then I can slide the rest out we want to be sure that we keep in mind this is the base side I'm gonna put a B way at the bottom here this will be underneath Oh, there we go and mark it so I know that this side is the base. For this I like to use a really super flat surface. This piece of countertop marble, this tile is super flat so now I could use this as my surface to sand down my saddle. You want to be sure you don't lean one way or the other, if possible, so you don't make it angled on the bottom. On this one, I'm just going to take it down until those notches are gone and then remeasure. Okay, let's check that height again. Yeah, we still got a ways to go, but we did come down a millimeter, so we'll. I would shave off another millimeter. We'll pull it out of there again, put a one millimeter stripe, and sand it down to that. And that's as, probably as far as we want to go in this. All right, the pencil line is just barely visible. We'll slide it back in there, tighten it up, and measure again. This is like the maybe the third time. That the bridge came out you know we did the truss rod three times so yeah you, you just go back and forth until you get the the measurements you like and i think this will be good and then we'll be able to move on to the net we gotta tune it up and find out we got a long way to go i'm gonna tune up that a first and i make sure that my strings wind on the post correctly because when you loosen them up, sometimes they come way out. There we go. 
go. That's close. Now we can jam in the rest. Okay, this is about the fourth, the fourth trip with the bridge. I may have played those before. And let's have a look at our measurements. Get some light. You know, just just above two, which is what we want. Yeah, that's. I'm not gonna go any further down. Let's leave it at that. So that was an improvement, and the intonation sounds pretty good. Well. Oh. Well, that's up against the thing here. Okay, that's good. So let's tune it to pitch one more time. Fine tune it. So when I check the intonation, I, I do a harmonic on the 12th fret, and then I fret it on the 12th fret, and those should match. And if they don't, that means the saddle's in the wrong position. But since this is a factory-made guitar, everything's set up pretty well. It, just the action was a little high, and it needed cleaning up. So now we'll check the action up here. On the first fret, this gap actually feels pretty good. Should be about 0-2-0. And then uh, let's measure. Feeler gauge. You just give it a quick check. And this was already in good condition. So we don't need to change the depth of the nut. We like the way it is. And finally, we play it. This is a... <laughs> it's not marked, but the slots, can you can only fit it one way. The small one on the side and the big one on that side. So they they made it foolproof. And you slot it in. Give the volume. I'm gonna turn the volume down on this. And I have this little practice amp to test it in. had some high frets on it so we leveled the frets and crowned them and we brought down the bridge about a millimeter or two we didn't touch the nut because the nut was already uh, in a good good height and put some medium gauge strings on it jamming guitar jack inputs right there got this opus 3 pickup 
three band EQ and there's the volume. So now we're going through the amp. distortion. So now we just trim these off, give it a quick shine, put it back in the bag and take it back. And that's it for this guitar setup. Play the right chords. To see more guitar setup videos, click on one of the end screen links. Don't forget to subscribe because it helps keep the guitar strings going. punchy nice and loud it's a lot of fun can't wait to work on the next one